Welcome to number 36. I was asked to share the news about the reboot of Monster Garage. Remember that show back in the first decade of the year 2000? I do. In fact, it was one of the first fabrication shows to ever hit the air long before all those other shows that we know today. And honestly, all the shows today are just a bunch of dramas, but I remember being about 12 or 13 when that show first aired and it was a huge inspiration to me. It sent me off on this long car discovery process went on for a decade and a half. But I also blame that show for all the hospital bills that followed. No joke, I've had at least 10 surgeries on my hands. I've had like stainless steel, giant pens poking out everywhere. I've ripped a bunch of tendons. They've bolted my bones together. Just massive stitches. Seriously, don't be like me, kids. My hands hurt all the time. You have to be really careful around these machines. I'm only 32 years old, but my hands feel like they're 60. It sucks. But why are we talking about Monster Garage with Jesse James? And why do they need my help promoting the show? Because I got the privilege to be a fabricator for a full episode. This is what it's supposed to pop. Seriously, come on. This is, you're ruining my celebration. Oh. Woo. Oh no, now I gotta clean everything up in here. <laughs> it's bubbly. That's right, your boy number 36 is a superstar on the Discovery Channel. That means you must watch it on the Discovery Go app. The Discovery Go app. The Discovery Go app. You will get a kick out of me on the show. I'm sure I was the ultimate goofball, and I'm pretty sure Jesse James just didn't know what to think about me. Poor dude, but he always had a smile on his face around me, and he was actually the most down-to-earth guy I've ever met before in my life. He's just a dude who likes to go out into his garage and, and make stuff. I can relate to that. For those who haven't seen or remember the show, they would assemble a team of five dudes or women and give them just five days to create whatever challenge they have in mind. For example, in an old episode, they converted a Miata into a jet ski. Silly cool stuff like that. And I can't talk about our episode really, at least not until after the 18th of January, 2021. Hint, hint. I'm also gonna see if they'll let me air it on my channel for those who can't afford another subscription in these crazy times. I'm sure they'll let me do that. I'll put some more information down in the description, maybe a link. You'll find the episode and I will get it to you. But at the end of each day during the build, I would show up at the hotel just completely from all the grinding and cutting and welding. I just kept touching my face all the time and I'm sure I looked pretty goofy on camera. The worst part of it all was the hotel room that I was staying at. It was one of those modern, like all white everything, like the walls, the bed, the bathroom, the floors. It was just, you walked into the room, it was just pure white. I made a mess and I did my best to clean it all up. Don't tell them I, I, I was at that hotel doing that. I'd appreciate that. They worked all of us all day and into the nights, but it was well worth it and make sure to check it out. The dudes I worked with are all badasses and it was just a true privilege. I don't know if I've said that three times. In other news, we've been knocking out some cool projects over here at Blip Speed Shop. It's tough opening a speed shop and trying to make content for y'all, but make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're working really hard over here to keep, keep all this stuff going. Uh, we just added some cool t-shirt designs that me and my partner have been putting together. They're up on our website right now at blipspeed.com. Anything you purchase would be a great help to us right now. We're just getting started and it's it's been a little tough. I mean, every dollar that I ever find goes into another tool for this shop right now. I've also put some Blipspeed logos on some underwear for men. I haven't figured out how to do the bikini stuff yet. Still cool though. Subscribe and share, subscribe and share, okay. I'm working on a video right now about stainless steel exhaust systems, but I wanted to cover something else that I have noticed 
in the stainless steel world that I feel would get lost in that episode, so I'm just gonna make a little mini episode about this particular subject. How the heck is weld porn made? Is weld porn good for your welds? Can weld porn not be a good weld? Well, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a, a term you can search in Google called weld porn. And when you type that in, all you'll see is super high res images of, of beautiful welds that look completely machine-like, but they're done by hand. But are they using tricks that don't necessarily lead to a better weld? I've just kind of been asking myself this question. I really don't know the answer to it, um, but I have some theories and some ideas. And I wanted to sit down, bring you close over here to the weld table, do some welds and kind of talk about it for a minute. Just kind of give you my thought process. Let's do this. Let's get going, let's get going, let's get going. So real quick, before we get too deep into this uh, discussion, I wanted to talk about Tycon Industries. I don't owe them anything and they don't owe me anything technically, but I've been finding that Tycon is a fantastic source for stainless steel and titanium, super high quality stuff. I talk more about it in the next episode, but something sort of happened that I did not expect. They do this six days of Christmas thing and somehow we won a thousand dollars worth of free materials. <laughs> and so instead of buying materials, I decided to buy some tools that I've been neglecting to buy for a long time. So I bought a complete purge kit that will allow me to stop using aluminum foil for all my back purging. Whenever you're welding stainless or titanium, you always want to make sure there's no oxygen anywhere near your welds. And that includes on the top side and the inside. And so you do what's called a back purge. These are just simply plugs that go on the end of these pipes so that I could feed argon to the inside and, and, and get my weld done. I also bought one of their elbow cutting jigs, mainly because when you get into these bigger size, like three inch pipes, it becomes really difficult to make perfectly straight cuts across um, on a bandsaw. And so having it in this jig, I can actually put it in my, my horizontal bandsaw and just let it automatically cut. It's supposed to be really cool. It's supposed to work really good. Um, these aren't cheap. So basically, yeah, from what I showed you, I'm, I'm already out of money. $1,000. dollars i got a couple other things, but Nothing else really, really cool. I put some information about Tycon in the description. Check them out real quick. It's pricey, but everything comes individually packaged. They've already cleaned it, deburred it. It's ready to weld, but I'm gonna get these pieces prepped and then I'm gonna do three different types of weld. And then I wanna have a discussion about which weld is actually the strongest and the best looking. And again, I'm not a professional about TIG welding stainless steel. I just, I'm getting back into it again taking a serious plunge and I've been doing a lot of research and I've just been noticing something about a lot of videos that I'm seeing on YouTube when it comes to uh, welding stainless steel and this isn't like really a myth busting sort of thing at all I'm just giving you what I think is going on what I see as a as another fellow welder also I need to find something better than these microfiber rags to clean these things off because I always get these little tiny bits of microfiber in there. And then I have to find my little stainless brush and clean it off, which that thing is always missing. Give me a second. Ow, that was sharp. So yeah, I always gotta knock those little pieces of microfiber off of there. You just can't get them off. Always like either push or pull when you're using one of these brushes. You don't want to sit there and grind it into the actual part. You want to like kind of dust it off of there. Probably gonna want to use the jig for this. Give me one second. I'm just gonna get this tack together real quick and then we'll talk about it. Do some real quick welds. As tiny and as precise as possible to hold these pipes together. All it takes. All 
That's a noise that always makes me nervous when that high frequency is sitting there hunting for something. That's how you shock the shit out of yourself. It's like, I can't find the metal. Let me go right through your heart. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna need one more cut on this. Let me, I'll go do that. I'll be right back. Uh, just be patient. Give it a minute. Just ignore all that nonsense right there. Don't look. Everybody look away. Stop looking at me. I'm gonna show you the two most common types of weld that I see all the time and I kind of disagree with. Let me do them real quick and then we'll talk about it. Oh, let's put the purge plugs on. Let's give those things a shot. Probably gonna be this green set. Nope. It's probably gonna be this yellow set. <laughs> And then it has some type of diffuser. We'll have to get those installed. My stainless steel throwing knife that I keep at my desk. My guess is this diffuser is supposed to go inside here. Yes, nice. And then a little, nice. This is my purge line. Just gonna pop that on there. Ready to weld. So, the first weld I'm gonna do, I'm just going to establish my arc and just travel across this pipe with no fill rod, no pulsing. Just gonna, this is one of the most common welds that I see. So this entire chamber will be full of argon, no oxygen. What happens is when you're welding and you're doing a full penetration on this weld all the way through to the other side, it causes what's called sugaring. And sugaring is just the stainless steel reacting to the oxygen, probably making some type of oxide. Always back purge. If you're, if you're buying a $2,000 stainless steel exhaust system and they don't back purge, run away from that shop. So bear with me for just a moment. I have to overdub this entire part. The welding was causing some issues with my audio. But this is the first weld I did. I didn't use any fill rod or do any type of pulsing. I just gave it all of the 65 amps and slowly moved across the pipe. So I turned on my pulse modulator and I normally like about two pulses per second. And I like to turn the amps up just a little bit to maybe like 70. And just like the other weld, I mash all the way down on the pedal, full amperage, and just travel across the pipe, kind of timing myself with the pulses. You kind of want to stop for just a moment when the pulse is at its maximum. For the third weld, I used a stainless fill rod. This is what I feel like is proper TIG, going at about 65, 70 amps, dipping the rod every half second or so. Okay, so this is the first weld we did. This was the straight, no pulse, no rod, just melting everything together straight down the line. This is the second weld where we had the pulsing action going on. It's pretty much exactly like this, except you just get maybe just a little bit more of a actual fake puddle looking weld. The weld just comes off looking a little bit more realistic, but it's still, we'll talk about this in a sec. And then this is the third weld where I actually used the fill rod. And as you can see, it's not nearly as clean as the other two welds, but this weld is going to be immensely stronger than these two welds. And this is pure speculation on my part, but I think it's because when you kind of rub your finger across this, ow, after it cools down, but I'm not gonna be able to like film it in any special way, but it craters. Like the, the pipe is going in and where the weld is, it actually sloops down and then the pipe goes again. That's a few thousandths of an inch taken away from the total thickness of this material. And that's why I think that is a inferior weld because the metal is just not as thick. Same thing with the pulse welds, just the exact same thing, just a different type of makeup. So 
when I do the welds with a fill rod, you can see it actually bulges up and over, increasing the ultimate thickness of this pipe. That's what I think. I made this video specifically so that, you know, when you buy a header and you see this dial on it, which you most likely will because this is the way most of them are done, you just kind of have an idea of what they just did. Here, they maybe put in a little bit more effort to make it look like a legit weld, but this is still not a legit weld. You can definitely learn how to weld TIG welds like this in 10 minutes. You can sit down with me and I can explain it to you. Put the machine on the right settings and you will be able to follow this line and make that weld. It's when I hand that fill rod to you and, and ask for you to do a dip every half a second as you're traveling across this at 65 amps. Um, it's not so easy. The most common thing that happens is you're welding and you end up sticking this fill rod into the electrode and it welds itself into place and then you're like oh it's stuck and then you kind of pull it up like this and this is still attached to the to the tungsten well you just you just finish the circuit and you're just going to get shocked to living shit so this type of welding takes years and years and years of practice, especially if you don't have somebody around you who knows how to weld like this already. You're gonna be doing so much research and so much looking online, but it's worth it. Hey, thanks for watching our video today. Really appreciate it. Keep an eye out for the Jesse James episode. That's coming up soon, uh, January 18th. And then I will be releasing another episode about stainless steel uh, exhaust systems. Uh, and you're gonna wanna see it, it's pretty cool. All right guys, have a good time. Thanks for watching. I'm here in the blind being ultra quiet because somewhere out there is an animal and I'm hungry. I don't have money for food anymore. So I'm sorry people, but please like and subscribe because if you subscribe, I don't have to shoot any more animals to survive. I'll just let the butcher people do it. All right, thank you. Goodbye. Oh my gosh, it's coming right towards me. Ah!